So 18.6 uh, relates Gibbs free energy to equilibrium. But before we start talking about equilibrium constants and such, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, standard conditions. So we've been talking about uh, delta H naught, delta S naught, and delta G naught. And I've drawn some attention to that naught symbol, but um, maybe we just haven't been terribly um, particular about always talking about how this means standard conditions. This means one molar concentration for all reactants and products, one atmosphere of pressure for all gaseous reactants and products. And so when we say that uh, delta G naught is less than zero, that means that uh, the reaction is spontaneous. What we really mean is that uh, if we have uh, reactants and products at one molar and one atmosphere of pressure, then the reaction will proceed forward. And uh, that means that um, what we really are saying is that uh, the reaction should be product favored at equilibrium because um, standard conditions are kind of like that perfect balancing point between product favored and reactant favored. And so if delta G naught is less than zero, the reaction will proceed forward producing more product, consuming some of that reactant, and in the end you'll reach an equilibrium position that is product favored. And if delta G naught is uh, greater than zero, we've said that that means it's non-spontaneous. Um, and <clears throat> what we really mean by that is that when you have all of your products and reactants at one molar concentration and one atmosphere of pressure, then um, uh, it will not proceed forward to produce more products. Instead, it will go in the reverse. And it will consume some of the product and regenerate some of the reactant. And this is going to produce a reactant favored uh, a reactant favored um, uh, reaction mixture at equilibrium and then uh, delta G naught is equal to zero we say that means that the system is at equilibrium well, what we mean is that it's at equilibrium under standard conditions. And standard conditions mean that all of our reactants and products are one atmosphere and one molar concentration. And so that means that K is equal to one. And so we've got all sorts of equilibrium reactions that will reach equilibrium, but very few of them are gonna have a K equal to one. You know, that's a great coincidence. Usually when something reaches equilibrium, we don't mean that the delta G naught is equal to equilibrium. Uh, we don't mean that the delta G naught is equal to zero necessarily. What we mean is that the delta G is equal to zero. And this is um, non-standard conditions. I've left off the naught, um, and I would say that when uh, delta G is equal to zero, then you could even say that's, that those are the equilibrium conditions, not the standard conditions, the equilibrium conditions. And so uh, that's just a little bit of, a, uh, of an intro. You know, we've been talking about delta H naught, delta S naught, and delta G naught, and all of these are technically only referring to a mixture of reactants and products at one molar and one atmosphere of pressure, and that's important. Okay, so, uh, well, delta G, we can find an enthalpy and an entropy at different um, uh, reaction compositions. Generally, these are, um, uh, so the delta H is generally not going to uh, have a strong dependence on the composition, but delta S will, and therefore delta G will. Um, Anyway, what we really want to develop today is an equation 
it says that uh, delta G is equal to delta G naught, let me make sure I get my signs right, plus RT times the natural log of Q. Uh, so this is the gas constant. That's going to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Although because uh, delta G's are usually expressed in kilojoules per mole, sometimes it's better to uh, uh, convert this straight away to 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And then the T is going to be the temperature in Kelvin. And then Q, this is the reaction quotient. Which, remember, has the same sort of mathematical form as the equilibrium constant, only it applies under uh, any sorts of conditions. I like to say that actually the equilibrium constant is a special case of Q. Um, Q is the more general case. In other words, you're going to have the concentrations of the products raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentrations of the reactants divided by the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. Um, and so uh, we can, um, uh, let's see, uh, na th this the natural log is, of course, the base E log. It's ln on most of your calculators and, and whatnot. Um, OK, so uh, we can uh, take this equation, and we can figure out what the delta G will be uh, under non-standard conditions. And I, I want to refer back to a, there we are. Uh, to a reaction that we were uh, examining in earlier, um, in earlier uh, sections, and that is the reaction of two H two gas plus O two gas. Uh, this is actually an equilibrium reaction forming two H two O gas, and we had calculated delta H and delta S and delta G naught at two different temperatures. So let's take the delta G naught at uh, 5,500 Kelvin. Because I think that was, that was kind of the more interesting one to me. That was a delta G naught that was much closer to zero, which means that this reaction was kind of a more interesting and meaningful equilibrium. At room temperature, the delta G naught was very negative, and that means that this was hugely product favored. Um, and uh, you know, almost not an equilibrium at all. Well, at 5,500 Kelvin, uh, delta G naught was equal to 5.90 kilojoules per mole. Okay, um, and that meant that the reaction was non-spontaneous, remember, and um, we kind of had left it at that, but let's talk about it in our new found equilibrium-minded language. That means that if I have a mixture with one atmosphere of pressure of uh, um, uh, water vapor and one atmosphere of pressure of oxygen and one atmosphere of pressure of hydrogen gas, then actually this reaction will run in reverse. Non-spontaneous means that under standard conditions, uh, this will run in reverse and will consume some of that water vapor and will actually be generating some hydrogen and oxygen. Um, so uh, let's pick a set of conditions. Okay, let's suppose that the uh, pressure of H2O is equal to 0 0.8 atmospheres and the pressure of oxygen is equal to um, 1.8 seven atmospheres, and the pressure of hydrogen gas is equal to, uh, let's say, uh, 1.1 atmospheres. I'm literally just making these numbers up. Um, so this is a set of non-standard conditions. 
um, and uh, we can figure out whether the reaction is spontaneous or not under these non-standard conditions by first finding Q and then plugging it into this uh, equation right here. So what is Q going to be? Let's solve that up in this corner because we're going to run out of space. Uh, well, we'll take the pressure of uh, water and we'll square it. So that's uh, 0 0.8 squared. And remember for Q and K, we just we become sloppy about the units. We'll just leave the units off for reasons that will become clear to you if you go on and take 3610 from me. But for now, we'll just say we're going to be terribly sloppy and just leave off the units. Uh, Q should be unitless in the end. Whether they cancel out or not, we just force it to be unitless. Okay, so we have the uh, water product squared, and then we'll have H2, 1.1 squared, and um, O2, 1.7. Let's see what that value of Q is. 0 0.8 squared divided by 1.1 squared divided by 1.7, and I get a value of Q of 0 0.311. Okay, now we can um, uh, figure out delta G under these non-standard conditions. Delta G is going to equal 5.90 kilojoules per mole Kelvin plus 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. That is the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. I divide it by 1,000 to put it into units of kilojoules. Um, times the temperature, which is 5,500, 5,500 Kelvin, times the natural log of 0 0.311. Let's see what we get for delta G. Five point nine plus point oh oh eight three one four times five five zero zero times the natural log of 0.311. Have I done that properly? I believe so. Okay, and here I get a delta G of negative uh, 47.5. Negative 47.5. Uh, that'll be kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that means that under these conditions it will proceed forward. Um, you know, under standard conditions, it went in reverse, and so we know it should be reactant favored, but not nearly that much. Uh, if, we, uh, if we take these conditions, then it's actually spontaneous. It will proceed forward um, uh, until it reaches a new equilibrium. Okay, well, we can take this equation here, and we can go even farther still. Let me... Um, See, I want to keep all of that. And we can um, uh, say, well, um, under the equilibrium conditions, so at equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. Right? Not delta G naught, delta G. So under whatever conditions are equilibrium, the delta G will be equal to zero. And Q will equal K. Under equilibrium, Q is K. And so we can uh, rearrange this to say that uh, zero is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln of K. And we can arrange this uh, in two different ways. We can say that uh, Delta G naught is equal to negative RT ln of K. So this is how, uh, if you're given an equilibrium constant, you can actually calculate the delta G naught without referring to any of those tables in Appendix A2. That's very convenient. 
or if we uh, are given a, a delta g naught and we want to find k, well k is going to equal um, e raised to the power of the negative rt over delta g naught. Okay, and that's just that's just rearranging things. Uh, this is the form where you'll usually see this equation in textbooks. Um, and so let's uh, let's go ahead and figure out uh, for this reaction um, at uh, 5,500 Kelvin, what is the value of K? I know it'll be less than one because delta G naught is positive. I know it'll be greater than 0.311 because we just calculated that. So we know it's somewhere between those. Let's figure out what the value really is. Um, so we'll say k is equal to e raised to the power of negative 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin times 5,500 Kelvin divided by 5.90 kilojoules per mole. We'll just put that into our calculator and see what we get. So the EXP function is the E raised to the power of negative 0 0.008314 times 5500 divided by 5.90. I think I've got that right. No, I don't. Well, something's gone wrong, hasn't it? pause this until I figure it out. Okay folks, I found my problem. I'm sorry. Uh, I got this part backward. Let's walk through it real quick. Um, if delta g naught is equal to negative rt ln of k, then we'll divide g naught by rt instead of dividing rt by g naught. So this will be negative uh, delta g naught divided by rt. That was my problem, so make sure you correct this in your notes. Um, and now we'll, we'll put it in. That took me a minute, and a little embarrassed. Okay, so we have np.exp, oops. There we go, okay. So np.exp will have a negative uh, 5.90 divided by 0.00. 8314 divided by 5500. That is the delta, negative delta G over RT. And here we get a value K. K is equal to 0 0.879. We really, um, yeah, we should get about three sig figs there. Um, so, uh, k is equal to 0 0.879. And hopefully you saw and learned from me making a mistake and catching my mistake and fixing it. I knew that k should have been in this range and uh, that's why I didn't accept the value of k that it, that it gave me. I knew there must have been a problem somewhere and if, if you kind of try to keep the big picture of w about what magnitude do you expect your answer to be things like that, then you can, you can catch problems before they become problems. Okay, so um, uh, that is finding K from the delta G naught. Let's go the other direction. We can get rid of this equation now. 
And let's just consider um, uh, solubility. We know that uh, for NaCl, the uh, solubility product is 37.66. Uh, so we can uh, uh, use that to figure out molar solubility of sodium chloride and all of that. But we can also find then what is the delta G naught for the solvation of uh, sodium chloride. That would be negative R times T times um, uh, the natural log of 37.66. I believe this was at um, you know, 298 Kelvin. That was the solubility at room temperature. And of course, as you change the temperature, the value of K is going to change, and the temperature here will change. So you need to make sure that your equilibrium constant and the temperature for your uh, uh, Gibbs energy of reaction are uh, correspondent to one another. Um, Let's just solve this real quick. Uh, so that'll be negative uh, point zero point zero zero eight three one four joules per mole Kelvin times two hundred ninety eight Kelvin. That's the room temperature. Oops. Times uh, the natural log of thirty seven point six six. And so now we know that the uh, Gibbs energy of solvation for the standard Gibbs energy of solvation for sodium chloride is equal to a negative uh, 8.990. Kilojoules per mole. Okay, and I really like, you know, this ends chapter 18, uh, but I really like how everything is starting to come together. Our idea of equilibrium was already tied into the idea of kinetics through rate mechanisms, uh, so through reaction mechanisms, and um, uh, the rate constants in pre-equilibrium steps of the reaction mechanism. Uh, and uh, the kinetics and the equilibrium are now tied into thermodynamics and Gibbs energy in this way. And um, I just think it's really neat how all these different threads are beginning to come together. Um, you can uh, start to find alternate ways to solve problems. You know, if I wanted to find the delta G of solvation for sodium chloride, I could have turned to appendix A2 and um, looked up the delta G naught values, or I could have looked up the delta H uh, formations and the, delta, and the standard molar entropies, or I could do it this way. There's lots of options when you uh, sort of understand the whole landscape of chemistry. You can see the different pathways to get to your answer, which I think is, uh, is pretty neat. So we'll um, end chapter 18 here and uh, move into electrochemistry. And guess what? Electrochemistry is also going to tie into all of this. So it just gets better from here on out.